So previously, we've looked at long head of biceps tendinopathies, but a really critical condition that can also occur is a full rupture of that long head of biceps tendon. This is a really interesting injury. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So to talk about the long head of biceps tendon, there's only one place to start, our 3D anatomy model. So here is the biceps brachii muscle. We've all seen it, but let's talk about the name. Biceps indicates that this muscle has two heads. It has a long head and a short head. And of course, in this video, we're talking about ruptures to the long head of biceps tendon. But in fact, we actually very rarely get short head of biceps tendon ruptures, certainly nowhere near as much as the long head. And that also goes for other pathologies in general. So let's take a closer look at this long head of biceps tendon. Now, it runs through the bicipital groove, which we can see is this indentation in the proximal humerus and it's held in place by a small ligament called the transverse humeral ligament to make sure that it stays nicely within that groove. The tendon then runs over the superior aspect of the proximal humerus and there's actually an intra-articular component to the tendon, meaning that it actually runs inside of the capsule of the glenohumeral joint. It then inserts into the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. This simply means supraglenoid, a small tubercle which is superior to the glenoid. But what we also know is that the tendon partially attaches to the glenoid labrum. This is this fibrocartilaginous ring that runs around the glenoid and we know that the long head of biceps tendon partially blends with the superior aspect of that labrum as well as the supraglenoid tubercle. Now this is a really important point because we know that in the under 40 age group, when they have a significant trauma involving that long head of biceps tendon, they tend to experience what we call as a slap tear. And we have a brilliant video for you on this, which you can find at the end of this video. In the over 40 age group, we find that because the tendon is a little bit more degenerative as we get older, the patient tends to suffer a long head of biceps tendon rupture instead of the slap lesion. So that's a really important point to mention with regards to the anatomy and the patient's age. So that's the anatomy. Let's dive into how this injury occurs. What kind of things do we need to be listening for in our patient's history? Well, the first, as we alluded to in the anatomy, is a trauma. So when we're thinking about things like our patient falling onto an outstretched hand, we might be thinking about a long head of biceps tendon rupture as a potential injury sustained. Now, the second common cause, although far less common than the trauma, is when our patient experiences a degenerative tear. So this is where we have individuals who have had this repetitive overhead use of the shoulder over a long period of time and that attritional degenerative process can lead to weakening of that tendon which may lead to a tear. So there we're thinking of our manual workers, we're thinking about our window cleaners, painter decorators, people who have spent a long period of time with their arm in an overhead position that may lead to that degenerative tear. Now, in terms of demographics, we mentioned in the anatomy section that when it comes to traumas involving the long head of biceps tendon, in the younger age group, this is not an absolute hard and fast rule, but generally those under the age of 40 tend to have stronger tendons. And so when they have a trauma involving the long head of biceps tendon, rather than the tendon rupturing, they tend to experience a slap lesion where that long head of biceps tendon gets pulled away from that labrum, taking a little bit of the labrum with it. In the over 40s, because the tendon is a little bit more degenerative, we can actually see more of the actual rupture to the tendon itself. However, consider that in the older adult, a trauma may also involve other pathologies, perhaps a rotator cuff tear or perhaps even a fracture because we know that the bones of the shoulder get a little bit more fragile over time. And then we think about those who are at risk through the degenerative use. So as we said, your manual workers, your painter decorators, those who have spent long periods of time with the arm in an overhead position 
over their working history. And then some other risk factors we can consider. One is smoking. We know that unfortunately a long history of smoking can impact the quality of tendons, which can make them more susceptible to a tear. And also a history of using anabolic steroids. We know that a long-term use of these drugs can lead to tendon dysplasia, which is a fancy way of saying that the tendons don't build as strong as they should do. Therefore, listen out in that patient history to use of anabolic steroids. Lots of other tendon ruptures, like an Achilles tendon rupture or a quadriceps tendon rupture. We sometimes hear of these with those who have taken anabolic steroids in the past. So, subjective history. What may our patient be reporting? Well, we're certainly going to be listening out for that history of trauma, particularly if our patient may have heard a pop at the time of the injury or if they sustained a lot of bruising in the days after it, particularly if it's around that anterior or perhaps even to the lateral shoulder. That's certainly worth considering. We might also expect that they've suffered some loss of active range of movement, particularly into shoulder flexion elbow flexion and supination of the forearm because that is what the biceps brachii muscle does. No doubt they may well also experience some weakness or report some weakness when they're telling you their history in those movements too. So then when we're physically examining the patient, we would expect that they would have some kind of loss of active range of movement, particularly at the shoulder joint with that weakness in those movements as we've mentioned. So therefore our resisted tests are gonna be really important, but a really great observatory sign to look out for is Popeye's sign. So this is where we find that a portion of the muscle belly for the biceps brachii drops a little bit more distally, like you would see if you were looking at Popeye. Now, the idea behind this is because the long head of biceps tendon has been ruptured, one half of the biceps brachii has lost its superior attachment, causing the belly to fall down a little bit, leading to Popeye's sign. Great. So how is this condition treated in practice? Well, in some instances, surgery might be considered to reattach that long head of biceps tendon. This might be for the younger population, perhaps the athletic population, someone who really needs to maintain power to the biceps brachii muscle. However, a lot of the time, particularly for the older generation, surgery isn't necessary. And in fact, many of these patients are managed conservatively. And that's because other muscles, including the rotator cuff and the other elbow and shoulder flexors can take over the role of biceps brachii without the patient losing too much function. So therefore, conservative rehab can focus on things like quite simple, gradual progressive strengthening. We can think about elbow flexion strengthening and we can think about isometrics starting from a position of 90 degrees elbow flexion, ensuring that these are comfortable for the patient with perhaps a five second hold, 15 reps and two sets. Then we would naturally head to bicep curls as well as some supination strengthening and perhaps even some low level, low weight shoulder flexion with a slightly extended elbow. I would want to make sure that all of these are comfortable for the patient when choosing the weight and we can consider 8 to 12 reps with two sets. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more updates. If you wanted that slap tears video, you should be able to find it up here, which is a great watch. And remember, we have loads more resources for you on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.